What's up, Simonix? Welcome back to a new quick win. And today we're going to talk about files and downloading files. It's actually, I think, or it should be a quite simple topic, but there are a few things that you should watch out for. So today we will implement a simple app using Capacitor to download files, PDF, image, uh, video, and also open them on our device using Capacitor. The only thing you need for this tutorial is a blank new Ionic application and actually an Ionic native plugin. There is also a Capacitor plugin for opening PDFs, but that's somehow not really maintained anymore. So I just uh, used the Cordova plugin. If you don't know, uh, using Cordova plugins with Capacitor simply means um, calling npm install for the Cordova plugin and also, uh, of course, for the Ionic native wrapper. Now that you got your application in place, uh, we need one little step uh, before we get into all the coding and that's adding the HTTP client module to the array of imports because we're making a simple get request actually using the HTTP client to download files. So it's really as easy as that. And whenever you use Ionic native plugins or Cordova plugins, you add the wrapper from the package ngx to your provider's array. And then we can move on to our home page and home page TS because that's where we're gonna work most of our time now. Um, first of all, I'll bring in a few variables. So I found this great page. Uh, can we open it somehow? Uh, called file examples. Uh, which allows, come on, uh, to download some dummy files, video, audio, documents, images, all kinds of files in different formats and different sizes. I don't know who created that page, but that person was a genius because that's just awesome for testing. So uh, from that page, I copied three URLs for a PDF, a video and an image. Uh, we will also monitor the download progress. A uh, quick little example of creating your super simple own um, download bar. Uh, we will also keep track of the files using Capacitor uh, storage. And finally, also, um, well, allow download from any URL in case you got a file anywhere and want to test this. So we need a few more things. Uh, we need the plugins from Capacitor, from which we will, uh, well, which we will destructure into using storage and file system because we will actually write the files to our real app system after download. And we need the file opener that we installed using Ionic Native. Now for the constructor, of course, we need our HTTP client. Um, not the module, just the HTTP client and the file opener, file opener. So that's for our dependencies. Now, right in the beginning, we can actually call a function load files um, because, uh, well, because it's the most boring part. So loading files are as we also did in, I think the previous quick win, um, is simple call to the capacitor storage using a key, um, which you can either define inside your class or you can just define it upfront. Or if you want to use it somewhere else, you can also add export to use it uh, somewhere else. Um, okay. Yeah, this dot <laughs> load files. Um, and then you have to parse the result as the capacitor storage is just plain text. So uh, we will store everything JSON stringified and then parse it back once we get it or set it to an empty array in the beginning. I also added two little helper functions. Um, let's start with the second one to get the MIME type. This is necessary for the file opener if you want to pass in the right MIME type. Um, I just created it for the three cases that we have and with a really, uh, well, very simple <laughs> check. But of course, uh, I think there are uh, libraries or code snippets available for more MIME type checking. So just create your own if you want to. Also, um, if we want to store files with Capacitor, we need to store a base64 string because Capacitor passes this information through a bridge and then stores it uh, on the native device. And therefore we need a base64 string, but the uh, file that we download will be a blob first. Now there's also a Capacitor community plugin to 
um, directly store a blob that you could use. Uh, actually, maybe I find the URL somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So that would be called capacitor blob writer. I don't want to make this tutorial more complicated. Actually, it looks pretty simple. npm install, a bit of setup for Android, and then uh, importing the write file from the capacitor blob writer. So if you plan to store bigger files, I would definitely recommend this because this extra step for the conversion to base64 can take some time and uh, decrease the performance of your application. Now let's get into something more funny and that's to download a file based on perhaps a predefined URL. Um, I just wanted to add this. So you can either uh, insert a URL inside our um, homepage, or you can also um, directly use one of the predefined URLs. Let's also quickly add a bit of code to our HTML file now. So I feel like I always get rid of this dummy stuff. I don't know if I'm the person uh, using most of this. Well, anyway. Um, so we get started with a little uh, input, which will be tied to our download URL, which means if you want to test this quite fast, just add your own download URL in here. But since we've uh, defined a few of uh, the URLs for PDF, video and image, I also added like a shortcut row for your testing with download file passing in the PDF URL, the video URL or the image URL. And once we get this in place, uh, we're actually a step further. So now we can call our download function. So this will set the URL. Otherwise, if you just pass uh, or add something to the input field, um, that value will be used. Now let's continue because now things are about to get interesting. We're going to make an HTTP GET request to download this dot download uh, URL. The important part is now the options that we pass to this request. Otherwise, it's just a standard uh, request. We set the response type to blob so we can uh, simply store the data later. And two more things. I want to report the progress and I want to observe all events. Those two parts are just for um, showing the progress. So if you're not interested in the, in the download progress of a file, then just get rid of this. But I thought since um, we're downloading files, which can be a bit bigger from time to time, uh, we should also add this little check. And once we got this in place, we need to add a little check inside the subscribe below. So usually you just get back the data, but because we observe all the events, uh, we need to check if our event type, so at the import is download progress or response. And if it is download progress, we will just calculate the current progress. It will be a value between zero and 100. And once we get to the other block, we can reset our download progress since in that case, uh, it means our download has finished. Now let's step through the next step. First of all, we need a new file to store our file. At this point, we just have a blob of data. But since we already got the download URL to a file, um, I would just recommend you use that name or perhaps from your API, you got a different name. But if you got this, we can call our helper function and pass in event.body. So um, usually you get like the result here. Now we use event.body since we have a tiny bit different setup for our HTTP GET request. Once we got the base64 data string, we can actually write to the file system using the capacitor file system plugin. Uh, we pass in a name, which is like whatever.pdf. Uh, then we pass in the data and then we get a path to the documents folder, which could be like data, whatever, or in this case, I think it's like documents for iOS. And then write file will write the file basically to this location inside the documents directory and we are happy. Now, of course, that's not all. Um, although we could uh, do this now already. Let's say log saved. Um, const foo. 
So that helps to at least see a bit of progress inside our application. Let's try to download the PDF and then it's stored right here. To really open this, uh, we need a bit more logic, um, especially the opening won't really work inside the browser now because we're using Cordova plugins. Um, but for the device, the next steps would be to get the URI path. Actually, isn't that like the URI path? I think I actually think um, that we're fine and we don't need this. This is from a previous version. So within saved file, we should actually have the URI. Let's be a bit adventurous and <laughs> use this URI uh, as path. Um, I'm not sure where this will lead us. Now to our call a file opener, we also need the MIME type. I will just leave this here in case we need to revisit this code, which might happen. Uh, and then we can use the file opener to call uh, either open or uh, show open with dialog. That's completely up to you. Open will just use the default application. Um, the dialog will give you uh, options to select any other application from your device. And finally, since uh, I also wanted to store the files, we will just add the path to my files array and then store this back to storage. I think this code mostly looks like uh, the video capture tutorial that we recently had. So that should be fine. So here we can download uh, on a device. Actually, let me bring this in. I got live reload up as well. Um, on a device, it should actually download the file and immediately open it. So great. That works pretty good. Uh, I'm actually amazed this automatically works. And for MP4, yeah, it also works. I'm I'm more than happy. I've seen worse tutorials and demos. <laughs> All right, um, working great on a device. Um, just a few more things. Uh, first of all, we don't have our progress bar yet. So we're already setting the download progress right here. Um, and therefore, I just added like the most easiest version of a diff style. <laughs> right in here please don't do this in a real application use your uh, styles file i just wanted to make this most easy with a width uh, download progress and percent and only display it uh, on download progress uh, besides that we also don't yet have the list um, for showing our files so I use the ion item sliding in this case uh, because then we got our item here for opening a file. And also on the end, we have a little delete file just as a little more example. But um, deleting a file is really, it's really quite boring. Um, let me give you the code. So for a delete file, once again, we call file system delete file. Uh, I really like working with a file system because it's so easy. You just need to understand which directory to pass in here. So this directory should of course be the same like here. Yeah, which it isn't of course. <laughs> Good that we talked about this. Uh, did I use data somewhere? Nope, hopefully not. So <laughs> of course, otherwise the file wouldn't be found. And the name, once again, uh, getting the real name of, uh, if you have like foobar myfile.pdf, this substring means start here and create a substring with this path. Uh, yeah, not not this really. I, I think you know what I mean, right? All right. Uh, what did we miss? Uh, the play, the play. No, open, open async open file, uh, for which we will use our Cordova plugin. In fact, so the start is once again the same, and now I think. I think we have stored um, a kind of strange path. Let me look into this. So this is the path we stored, um, which actually looks kind of nice to me. I'm not sure. Uh, let's say lock open our file and then I will also lock out the path again because I think we needed to convert it, this uh, or get the actual URI path. Um, 
and then once you once you get the path and the mime type it's actually just calling the file opener again this time i just used show open with dialog um, I'm just really curious to see the path, the different paths in here or the converted paths. So a little live debugging, remote debugging. Uh, if you haven't used live uh, or remote debugging on Mac, you can simply use Safari for iOS or you can use Chrome for Android. Simply open uh, Safari from the menu, go to develop, pick your phone, uh, phone, pick the website and then hope that you see something in the logs. So with our live reload in place, let's try to open a file. Uh, we try to open this file and convert it. It's actually, um, well, it's basically <laughs> the same. So I think we can leave out basically everything from that function. Oh uh, uh, no, that was my whole class. Um, because in the beginning I created this tutorial and I had the wrong path. So at this point, since we stored the right value, I think we're just fine. Yep, we're just fine opening the file directly like this. Um, if you see your file path being like the ones you saw in the debugging tools, like file, whatever, then everything is fine for you. Um, I can also hopefully delete files. Yep, I can. Uh, then, Let's move back to our uh, function right here, the download function, which we also removed this get URI path. So let's give this one a try again. Yep, that one also works without anything else. And you also see our little download bar at the top of our view. So let's just remove the last path, um, checking the download file again. We just need our saved file, which now or by now returns the URI as well. So no more get URI, we're fine. Um, because we then store the right path to our file, it's easy within uh, both delete file and open file to directly use this path inside our application. And I think, I think that's all. We covered everything, right? Did we? Um, we can download files, you could insert your own URL, and you can, with quite easy tools, uh, basically the native, or this, no, native in this context is wrong, the standard Angular tools, meaning the HTTP client, you can download files as a blob. Um, you can then use that result, pass it to Capacitor with a little transformation to Base64, or using the package that I highlighted in the beginning to directly write a blob to uh, the file system, um, whatever you prefer. As you can see, for small files, it's not really a huge problem, but if you're downloading like 100 megabytes or anything above, I would really recommend you check out the other plugin. If you got any problems with that, just let me know and we will talk about this. And otherwise, I hope this quick win helped you to uh, implement a cool download and open functionality within your own Ionic Capacitor apps. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins, and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding. Simon. <laughs>